Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie and I want to welcome you back to Beginning Interactive Fiction with Twine and Sugar Cube. In this episode, we'll be covering arrays. Now, the big question is, what are arrays? The way you can answer this is, let's say you're going to the supermarket and you're going to buy a bunch of things. Now, if you've decided to write things down in a list, that list is actually an array. Each item in the list is really an element within that array. An array just simply is, is a collection of items, and it doesn't have to be sorted or anything like that. Probably the most common place where you see an array is a solar array. You have each individual solar panel aligned in a collection. Well, when we're doing programming, we work with arrays all the time. They're great ways for us to store related objects that we'll be using at a later point in time. One thing I could use an array is, say, an array of scores. Let's say I had five players in a game and I wanted to keep track of each one of their scores. I would store them in, the, in an array. So the first element of the array would be, say, player one score. The second element of an array would be player two score and so on and so forth. To wait, the way to really understand arrays is to see them in action. So here we have twine open here, and I'm just gonna open up the brig like so, and we're going to define our first array. And the way you define an array is simple. You just do your less than signs, two of them, and you're gonna do, do a set, and you're gonna give this a name. So in this case, let's just call this scores, and then we're gonna do an equal sign here. And now we're going to put in a bracket. And after this bracket, we're going to put in each item in our array. This item could be a text item, it could be a number, it could be a Boolean value such as true or false, and it can be objects as well. The thing to keep in mind is that you can mix and match all these various types, but I highly recommend that you put just one type inside an array, meaning you don't wanna have text and numbers and Boolean values all in the same array. The reason for that is by having all different mismatched types inside an array, it's more likely that you're going to run into an error. For instance, if you're doing addition and you're adding in numbers, and then what happens if there's a true false value, you're gonna mess up your calculations. So in this case, we're just gonna work with numbers. So we're gonna put in our first score, which was 10. Then I'm gonna put a comma after that, and then I can put in my next one. And this is like 43. And I'm gonna put in a comma like that. The next one is 100. And then I can just say, put my final comma here, and then I put one. And then I put a close bracket like that, and now I've created an array. And I can access this array like a normal variable. For instance, if I wanted to print this out, I can type print, and we'll put scores like so. Now let's close this and run this so that we can see this in action. And you can see here, 10, 43, 101. Well, that's useful. We got, we got to print out the entire array, but it's more useful if we can actually access each, each one of these elements here. And the way we do this is if we come back here, we can do right after the scores variable, we can put another bracket, then we're going to access the actual index of the array. Here's where things get a little interesting. When doing anything with programming, you typically start counting with zero. So zero is your first item in a list. In this case, the zero would refer to 10, like so. 43 would be referred to as one. 100 would be two, and one would be three. Even though one is the fourth element of the array, it's index three. And we can just put three like so, and now let's see this again. Now you can see we're accessing one exactly like so. And we can just access these values and do whatever manipulations we need to do with them. So if I put 100, print scores 3 plus 100. And now if we run this, you can see the answer is 101. Now some of you may be thinking, this is cool and all, but why would I want to use an array in Twine? Well, there's one easy application of using an array, and that's for your inventory. As your players accumulate items, you may want to store each item within the actual array itself, such as a key card, or you can say a wrench, and so forth. Oops, I misspelled that. 
And then you can do a simple check if scores, let's say one equals wrench, then we'll print out you have the wrench. Like so. Now let's play this. And it says you have the wrench because the wrench exists in the array. There's actually a better way of doing that here. Instead of searching a specific index because the wrench may move, say the wrench may be in the first one. So instead of searching a specific index, what we can do here is we can use what is known as a method on the array. And this method is called contains. The way it works is that we put the name of our variable, like so, and then we put a dot. Now, after the dot, we simply type contains like this. And then we provide the object that we're looking for. In this case, we're looking for wrench, like so. Then we can close this up here. And I can even get rid of this because this is going to return a true and false value. If the scores contain a wrench, then we'll print out you have the wrench. And then you can see that works just like it did before. If you ever wanted to know the length of an array, you can find that out. You can simply put print and then you can just type scores like so. And then you can use your dot, you put your dot after your scores and you just simply write length like that. Now if we run, you can see the length is two. There are two elements in the array. We come back here again. Now you can see here, we define this array with two objects in it. And that's pretty useful when you define an array, but oftentimes you're going to define an empty array. So here, let's have an array called inventory, like so. And I'm gonna define this as being empty. And the way I do that is I just put a, bra a, a open bracket and a closed bracket like this. So I've created this array, but there's nothing inside of it. Now I wanna add things to this. And the way I do that is I type set, and then I can put in my inventory, like so. And then I'm gonna put dot, and I'm gonna write push. And after push, I can put in the item that I want to add into my array. In this case, we'll put in a wrench. And then I'll close this, and now let's print out the first element. You can see here I messed up the spelling of inventory and this will create an error. So you want to make sure your spellings match. Now I'm going to play and you can see a wrench. So that printed out the first element. Well, that's great, but what happens if the player puts down the wrench? How do I get rid of that? Well, I use a method called pluck. And since I know that this is the first element, I simply write inventory dot pluck, like so. And then I put zero, remember this is the first one, comma one. And what this will do is remove that element from the array. And then we'll just print out the inventory again. And when we play this, oops, we have an error there. And there we go. We removed that element from the array. In fact, to make it clear, we'll come back here and we'll just simply put the inventory like so, and we'll put it right above here as well. And now we'll play this one more time. You can see the inventory, a wrench, the inventory, there's nothing in it. As you can see, I was able to remove an element of an array because I knew where that element was located, but there's gonna be times where you won't know where that element is located. And thankfully, we have a method to find that for us, and it's called index of. So here we have a wrench, and let's just put down here a key card as well, and we'll put a shoe also. And again, I wanna remove this wrench. And the way I would remove this wrench is I have to find it first. So what I can do here is now set a new variable and I'm gonna call this index. And I'm gonna set this index of, and the way I set this variable is I put dollar sign inventory and I'm gonna call index of like so. 
And this is where I'm searching for a wrench. Here's the thing. If it finds the wrench, it's going to return me the index of where that wrench is found. But if it doesn't find the wrench, it's going to return a negative one. In this case, what we can do here is we'll just delete all this. I'm gonna use an if statement. And we'll say if index is greater than negative one. And we'll close out our if statement right here. And now I know that, okay, I found the index of the wrench. I can now remove that. In this case, I'm gonna call set and we'll just call inventory and then we'll call our pluck method. And I'm gonna start at my index and then I'm gonna do index plus one. And then we'll print out the inventory. All right, let's see how this works. And you can see here, we removed, we printed out the inventory and we did remove the wrench from it. There's a lot more going on with arrays and SugarCube. In fact, the more you learn JavaScript, if that's something you're interested in, the more you can leverage that knowledge to work with arrays. But the stuff I've shown you in this episode will give you a good start. The thing for, the thing for you to do is just start playing around with it. All right, I hope you learned a bit about that. In the next episode, we're gonna be covering loops and you're going to be seeing how loops work really well with arrays. So I will see you in the next episode. See you then.